Hello everyone, welcome to my video where we cover some duopoly competition methods. Uh, this is our first time really getting into any strategic behavior where firms actually have to consider the actions of the other firm when making our profit maximizing behavior. And so we're going to solve for equilibrium quantity and prices under four different competitive structures. Uh, this is intended for an intermediate microeconomics course. Uh, my course has no calculus in it, but it could still be helpful if you take one with calculus. Uh, also could be used for part of an I.O. course, something like that. I don't know, you'll figure it out. You're here, so you already know what you need it for. Here's our industry. We've got a demand curve, inverse demand curve. Price is 500 minus 2Q. Well, Q is Q1 plus Q2. That's a market Q there. So if you wanted to put each firm's quantity in it, it would look like this, 500 minus 2Q1 minus 2Q2. Uh, I assume that they have symmetric costs. They both have marginal costs at 20. So that's nice and convenient for our easy comparisons. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for the market quantity and price at collusion, where they don't really compete with each other. They split up a monopoly's output. Uh, when they compete via quantity with Cornell in a sequential game, sorry, Cornell's not sequential, in a simultaneous game, where they compete with quantities in a sequential game for Stackelberg, firm one will choose first and then firm two and when they compete via prices in Bertrand. In collusion, there's not really any competition. We're gonna act like a monopoly. And we're gonna split monopoly output. Uh, in this example, just for fun, I'm gonna say they're gonna split it 50-50. Eh, let's, let's do 60-40, that way it actually matters. Let's say they're going to split it 60-40. What we're going to do is we're going to solve for the monopoly output. And then we're going to give 60% of it to firm 1 and 40% of it to firm 2. Uh, let's see. So for monopoly, we want marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Marginal revenue on that big market curve is 500. And then you double the slope, minus 2. Oops minus 4q, I'm going to set that, e, forgive me, I'm going to set that equal to the marginal cost, which conveniently, since they're both constant, is still constant. So let's see, 480, well, I can't write today, this is a bad time to write this, is 4q, so the market Q is 120, and 60% of that goes to Q1. Which is 72. 40% of that is to firm two, which is 48. And there you go. We've solved for their quantities. Now, most examples, you're going to see they do it 50-50. Where they're symmetric firms, there's no reason to have an uneven split. I just figured you might as well know. Uh, they're splitting up this equilibrium, this market quantity. And let's see. And now we need our price. Okay. So for price, we, got, we know price is 500 minus 2Q. That's 500 minus 2 times 120. That's 500 minus 240 is 260. So there we go. We've got quantities and prices under collusion. You act like a monopoly. You choose the monopoly quantity and you split it up between the firms non-competitively. Now, Corno gets a little trickier. Uh, let's see. In Corno. We need our best response functions, and we need to see where they interact or where they intersect each other. Uh, a best response function says uh, for firm one means whatever Q2 does, the best response function tells me what will give me the highest profit. Eh, we'll just solve for it, okay? Uh, so to get a best response function for firm one, 
we need to find where marginal revenue for firm one is equal to marginal cost for firm one. Well, we know that the price is 500 minus 2Q1 minus 2Q2. Uh, to get my marginal revenue for firm one, I'm going to double the slope of this curve. 500 minus 4Q1 minus 2Q2. Notice, since I'm not choosing 2Q, it doesn't affect the slope. Uh, firm 2's behavior might shift my curve, but it won't, it won't slant it in any way. So let's see, set that equal to marginal cost, 500 minus 4Q1 minus 2Q2 equals 20. Uh, that's 480 minus 2Q2 equals 4Q1, 120 minus a half Q2 equals Q1. And this is my best response function for firm one. And it tells me exactly what Q firm one should choose, no matter what Q firm two picks. Every Q firm two picks will change my optimal level of Q. Okay, I want, now I wanna get the same thing for firm two. I need a best response for firm two, so let's set marginal revenue firm two equals marginal cost of firm two. Uh, the math's gonna come out the same, but let me set it up. Let's see, marginal revenue for firm two is 500 minus 2Q1 minus 4Q2. Algebra is gonna happen, and you're gonna get the same thing where the best response for firm two is that Q2 equals 120 minus half of Q1. Oops, no, there we go. So we've got these two best response functions. Now to get our equilibrium, we're looking for a point where they both choose quantity and price so that neither has any incentive to deviate. That's only gonna happen where these best responses line up with each other. So what I want to do is I'm gonna substitute Q1 into Q2 and vice versa. So let's see, solving for our equilibrium, let's do Q1 first. Q1 is equal to 120 minus one half of Q2. So I'm gonna take this Q2 right there. Oh, that didn't work. Technology, am I right? All right. One half of that Q. I borrowed my Q2, plugged it into my Q1. And now notice I've only got one variable in this equation. I can solve for it. That will give me the level of output at which Q1's best response will intersect with Q2's best response. Just a second, let me write this back in here so we don't forget it. All right, so what's this gonna look like? Let's see, that's Q1 equals 120 minus 60 plus a fourth Q1. That's 3 fourths Q1 equals 60. That's Q1 equals uh, 80. All right, now I want to solve for Q2, which if they weren't symmetric, I'd have to substitute into the other best response function. I would, I would take the best response for Q2, which is 120 minus a half of Q1. Let me borrow my Q1's best response real quick. Uh, let's see, where did that come from? Way up there. I'll borrow that, and I'll bring it down and plug it in there. And I'm going to get the same thing, that Q2 is equal to 80. If they had different costs, they would have different quantities. The lower cost firm would dominate the market. They're symmetric, so it doesn't matter. And so that means our market Q is 80 plus 80, which is 160. Our price is 500 
minus 2 times 160, which is 2 minus 320, price is 180. All right, so there's Cornell. We substitute our best response functions into each other, and it all works out. Let me write this in here again so we don't lose it. There we go. Okay, next. So that was a simultaneous game where no one can really know exactly what's going to happen for sure. And so they have to just make the choice together. What if firm one moves first and firm two responds to firm one's actions? Well, firm one's going to get a first mover advantage because they can solve this thing. One moves first. And so firm one can solve this through backwards induction. Meaning, they will figure out what firm two's best response is and use that to make their initial choice. So we already figured out how to solve for firm two's best response function when we did Cornell. Best response function for firm two is that Q2 equals 120 minus one half Q1. So firm one knows this and will account for it when choosing their Q1. In a, in a position where they have uh, the ability to direct the whole market as first mover. So we need to build a new demand curve for firm one where they account for this. Uh, let's see, so price is equal to 500 minus 2Q1 minus 2Q2. That we've already seen. Now we're gonna substitute the best response function in here. 500 minus 2Q1 minus 2 times 120 minus 1 half Q1. All right, so notice in Cornell, we got two best response functions. We substitute them into each other. In Stackelberg, we get the best response function of the second person and substitute it into the demand of the first. So the intersection is happening at a different point in time, and that's the whole point of the model. Firm 1 accounts for it when they make their first decision. So let's simplify this a bit. Price is 500 minus 2Q1 minus 120, oops, minus 240 plus Q1. So this is price equals 260 minus Q1. Cool. That is the demand curve firm one can work with, knowing that whatever they pick, this is what it will come out being because it's already substituted in the best thing firm two can do for itself. So firm one's marginal revenue curve is 260 minus 2Q1. Set that equal to marginal cost. Two sixty minus two Q one equals twenty. Two forty equals two Q one. Q one equals one twenty. Cool, we got that one. What's firm two's quantity? Well, we got our best response function for firm two. It's sixty minus. One. Oh, sorry, it's. 120 minus one half Q1. So that's Q2 equals 120 minus one half of 120. Q2 is gonna be 60. So first mover has a big advantage. Even though they have the same costs, first mover here is getting two thirds of the market. The market Q is 120 plus 60 is 180, which means our price, 500 minus two times 180 is 500 minus 360, which is $140. Whew. Okay, three down, one to go. Uh, hopefully the 
distinction between where you do your substituting in Corno and Stackelberg makes sense. If not, hey, you can always rewind. Bertrand now. Bertrand's a totally different approach where instead of competing by quantity, we compete in price. And each firm will try to undercut the other firm's price because if price one is less than price two, then Q1 equals Q and Q2 equals zero. If price one is greater than price two, Q1 equals zero and Q2 equals big Q. So whichever firm gets the lower price takes the whole market. And if price one equals price two, Q1 equals Q2 equals big Q over two. Uh, return gets a little more interesting if they have different cost functions, because one firm will take the market and make more profit, but we'll deal with that maybe some other time, maybe not. Either way, we're no longer looking for some marginal revenue equals marginal cost type argument. We're looking for price equals marginal cost. They're gonna undercut each other's prices until this happens. And so the quantity is gonna be the same quantity as perfect competition. So let's see. Um, price is 500 minus 2Q. I'm gonna set that equal to my marginal cost. Ignore that part. Set that equal to 20. 2Q equals 480. Q equals 240. Now Q1 and Q2 are both going to be half of that. So they're both making 120. And the market price, 500 minus 2Q. 500, uh, well, I don't need to do this. We know it's the marginal cost, minus 480. Whoops, that is not a minus, that's an equals. There we go. Equals 20. And there we got it. And so there is your crash course in duopoly with four of our major things we're interested in solving for. I hope you found this useful. If not, hey, too bad I wasted your time anyway. Good luck, guys. Thanks for watching.